Welcome to Toffee TV for today's chat. I am joined by Sam Benjamin, actor, writer, and Evertonian. You'll have seen Sam in Peaky Blinders, BBC's War of the Worlds, and he's due to star in this year's action movie, I Am Vengeance, with the Vinnie Jones, Retaliation. So that looks like it's going to be a big one. Sam, welcome to Toffee TV. How are you, mate? Doing good. Under the circumstances, Baz, how are you? <laughs> yeah, they've been... Just all doing the same thing, aren't we? Just watching as many box sets as we can or playing on my PlayStation or all of that kind of thing exactly. to stay out the way. And can only do what we, yeah. we've been told to do, mate, can't we? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So where are you at the moment? You're in flowing. London? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. In, um, I'm, in my flat. <laughs> I'm, in, uh, I'm in my flat in London. Right. Ah, oh, so no garden? No garden? Oh, no, 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 none of this, none of this fancy, uh, fancy stuff that other people have. But yeah, yeah. So you're getting out for your hours exercise a day. That's the most important thing. I am. Yeah, it feels like prison, doesn't it? Like you go, you got to go out for your hour out of solitary. It's mad. <laughs> it is mad. It's go such a the, mad go situation. Go to the parks for the first time in your life. Yeah, I know. Seen a lot of people walking who have never seen walking before, but fair play. Fair play. You do what we can. I saw, I saw, um, I saw someone post uh, the other day, and uh, she's like a fitness instructor, and she said something like, 40 years I've been in this industry trying to get people to exercise, and all it took was the government to lock everyone down and say you can only go out for an hour. Yeah, and everyone's on it. Everyone's on it. Everyone's on it, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's have a little chat about your career, how you got into acting and stuff. So how did that come about to seeing you? You'd gone off to university and went to a summer drama school or something like that. Is that how we, or were you acting before then? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, there's obviously the long version, the short version. The uh, I mean, essentially, I was... Ever since I, I was lucky at, in, in the sense that ever since I was a little kid, I, I wanted to be an actor. Um, I can remember thinking it in primary school, and I think it was a combination of just loving films and um and not having any confidence as a kid so i prefer being other people that's where i could be confident and be whoever i wanted to be so um and just growing up with you know all i used to go to my dad's every other saturday and we used to used to show me inappropriate 18 rated films like alien and die hard and all those kind of action films from the 80s and i'd be like oh i want to do that so um but then, you know, my dad was a taxi driver, forklift truck driver. My mum was a hairdresser and everyone thought I was mad um, to want to be an actor, <laughs> which probably that's true. And uh, so, yeah, I basically I went to school. I, I did like I didn't really study drama in school. I did it outside of school, um, especially as a teenager when a mate of mine was like, hey, do you want to come to this drama group? And I was like, eh. and he was like, it's like 80% girls. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll be, I'll be there on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so did that. And then, um, and yeah, and then in school, I was quite good at like the written subjects. And I was kind of being groomed to be going to law because um, I had good grades. Um, but then I kind of thought, nah, I've, I can't let, I need to follow my dream, at least attempt it. So I uh, and then so no one in my family had been to uni, so I was like, right, I'm going to go to uni. I'll do a proper subject, um, which was history, because um, I thought no point going and doing some Mickey Mouse. Even though some people say history was Mickey Mouse, but it's not as Mickey Mouse <laughs> as you know some like media studies or something like that. So I thought I'd go do a proper old school subject, but in my spare time, do as much acting, student plays, short films, all that kind of stuff, and then yeah. First play I was in was Angels in America, which HBO did a version of it with Al Pacino. Uh, did that, and I was lucky that uh, the director was knew what he was doing, and he invited this national student drama festival. And then I got picked, and then I ended up doing a summer training with Patrick Stewart. Um, and that was like the moment where I was like, oh my God, it's doable. <laughs> it's actually doable. <laughs> And um, just meeting someone like that and having a, you know, face to face with someone like Patrick Stewart, it's like, oh, and then, and then, like, I remember him talking about, you wouldn't expect it, but he's a working class lad from Huddersfield. And then you're like, oh, no, yeah, because obviously all that generation got taught to 
you know, speaking that accent. So it was like all yeah, of a sudden yeah. it's like, oh, it is doable. So then at that point I was like, right, I'm going all out for it. And then when I finished uni, I had no money. I was in debt. And then I moved back um, up to the Wirral, got a job in a bank because um, I just thought I've just got to make as much money as possible. I tried to get a job and I was on the dole for about a month and a half. Couldn't get a job. <laughs> and then um, and then eventually blagged the job in a bank and then uh, earned money, auditioned for drama school and then went to drama school the year after that. And then I've been working as an actor and as a writer and creating stuff as well for the past 11 years. So obvious. I mean, I'm I'm amazed you didn't want to be a footballer. I thought we all wanted to be footballers first, and yeah. then maybe acting was second. I I, it's weird. Like I think my I had I had a bit more of a realism in my footballing dreams than in my acting dreams for some reason. And you know, I used to play. I played for a team called Babington Rovers, um, and I was yeah. for a period I was the captain. I played defensive centre mid. It was kind of a bit of a Lee Carsley in the sense oh, okay. that. I, I was never I was never like I always knew I was never a natural, but I knew that so I had to work at it. So I was always okay. like I was a good tackler, I was a good passer, and I and like I could I had a good engine on me. So I just I just was a nuisance basically, rather than. But whenever I got the ball, my instinct was always right. I'm giving it to him because he can create something. Um, so I always I always knew on a football pitch I was I could hold my own, but I wasn't. You know, I wasn't um, a flashy player or a natural on the ball, so it was, I never had any illusions. Even though obviously, I dreamed of it, and I, you know, number five on the back of all my Everton shirts because that was the number <laughs> of war for my team as well. Outstanding. So acting, acting was the uh, it was the more realistic dream. So what was? I mean, obviously, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, right. Well, listen. I mean, yeah. you've achieved it. So, so there you go. Dreams. You go. It's all about dreaming, isn't it? Um. What was your first? What was your first real acting job then? Uh, the first one, uh, the literally the first one was I I did a a play called Glass House at, in at the Bristol Tobacco Factory and I got it just as I graduated from drama school in the September of two thousand and nine, and the Guardian gave it a one star review. <laughs> but but, um, but okay. they did say. The producer was devastated, but in the review they did put that I gave the best performance of the night. <laughs> so I was like, "Get results," it. and he was like, "What are you talking about? It's one star." And I was like, "Yeah, well." Um, <laughs> so I did uh, did that, but then my first TV job was Doctors, um, which I did in 2010, and I played I played like a a womanizing pizza delivery boy, whose uh, first you? line. Yeah, his first. I always remember my first line on TV ever was um, this uh, girl opens the door, and then I'm standing there in the doorway, and I just look down and then go, large pepperoni. And then uh, it, it it went on from there. So that was that was my first job. Um, and I always remember as well my agent at the time who got me the audition. She said, oh, I've got an audition for you. It's for doctors. But she was like, don't worry too much about it. You're not going to get it. And I was like, all right, great. I so, mean, yeah. keeping it real for you then. There you go. <laughs> you got it, though. Proved the wrong, didn't you? Yeah. Proved the wrong. Yeah, mate. yeah. And it got, yeah, and it was good to get something. It's it's always good as an actor to like get like get on the rung and get your first TV credit because then people are like, oh, yeah, he can do it. He's on there. You know yeah. what I mean? So has it just progressed from there then? Is it is it a case of just, do you read for everything? Do you get scripts sent to you? Is it, is it literally through agents? It's... it's a bit, it's a bit of both. I mean, it's been, it's been, um, it's been a struggle, like especially in the early mm. years. It's uh, you get you get the one thing, and then you think, "Oh, I'm off to the races here. I'm going to be. They're going to be bringing me in for you know the Leo DiCaprio movies and all this." Uh, but actually, it's not like that at all. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sometimes you're feeding off, especially in the early days, you're feeding off scraps. Um, the mm. next one I did was Little Crackers, which was with John Bishop, um, which I think was about a year after that. Right. Um, and then for a while, you kind of get brought in for stuff that's. You know, it's a lot of stereotyping. Like they, you know, they look, especially within the industry, they'll look at me and they'll go, you know, even though I'm, I'm from the Wirral and I don't have a particularly strong accent, but 
a lot of people, especially down south, as far as they're concerned, they they go, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's Liverpool. We'll bring him in for you know the the rough Liverpool guy on the estate, and we'll bring him in for the you know all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I kind yeah. of rode that a bit, and um, and it's good to you know if you're getting brought in. So yeah, I just did bits and bobs, and slowly but surely, you know, then did. Uh, did a like a one episode couple of scenes in Peaky Blinders as a Liverpool policeman. Um, nice. So yeah, and then it just builds and builds and builds. But you're doing a lot of you know a lot of hustling, a lot of emailing directors, going to events, uh, working three four jobs at the same time whilst waiting for the auditions, and then calling your agent and going, oh why wasn't a scene for that? Why wasn't a scene for that? And even now, like I just started uh, when I was watching the interview with you and Sam Hoare, and I've just started watching the English Game and. Started watching, I was like, "Oh, where was my audition for that?" <laughs> so uh, you know, you still Classic, do it, even, isn't it? If, even if you're, uh, you know, you you know, years into the game. Yeah, no, and I was like you just said, spoke to Sam Hall, spoke <laughs> to Andrew Gower as well, um, another Evertonian actor, and he was saying very similar to you. It's looking around for stuff, and and it, it is, it's very difficult to to get stuff. But I've I've had a lot. You were in War of the Worlds, of course, which was filmed up in Liverpool as well on BBC One. That was before Christmas, so that must have been good as well, being back up north and back here and yeah. doing a bit of filming here. Yeah, it's always great to come back up. And the amazing thing about the War of the Worlds was it was they filmed the scenes I was in uh, in in an old uh, hangar in Camelards in like a big old shipping container that they converted into a studio. And my nice. uncle, my dad, and my granddad all worked for Camelards, so it was like... Wow. And I was telling everyone on set, and they just they were just like, oh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is Camelair, this is where me fam, you know, me, me uncle was here, me, you know, and they were like, all oh, right, yeah, sounds yeah. <laughs> Safe, like, hello, innit? But yes, yeah, I got I got a big kick out of it uh, filming up there, and it was uh, it was also a bit weird as well because they, you know, I live in London, I auditioned down here, and then they send you up. And then I went all the way up to drop my accent and play like a real posh southerner. So that was uh, that was fun <laughs> as well. Madness. I've seen you put in Lucky Man, Fresh Meat appearances in things like that as well. So you have, I mean, well, like, I, I, and I know, is it the Vinnie Jones film coming out this year? I Am Vengeance, you're in that, is that right? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's called I Am Vengeance Retaliation. It's got Vinnie Jones and a... Uh, Ex WWE wrestler Stu Bennett, um, who's a oh, Preston yeah. North End fan, yeah, um, yeah. but he loves he does love Everton though. He he was like, oh, I do love that. I've always loved Everton since the Moyes era. Um, so we had a bit of football banter on that. But yeah, that I don't know when it's coming out. It's coming out at some point later this year. Yeah, um, and then I just did a um, I filmed a, a part in a new show. It's called Anthony. It's a drama based on that lad Anthony Walker. Um, oh, so that's yeah. quite a serious. Yeah, yeah. That that'll be coming out later this year. Um, right. So yeah, yeah. It's um, so even though it's paused for now, I've got a couple of things coming out. So it's just about looking for what what the next thing is as well. You need a death in paradise. Spoke to Sam about this the other week, mate. Ten days oh, in yeah. Guadeloupe. That's I mean, it sounds <laughs> yeah. all right to me. I yeah. love that as well. So that's that's a good one to get in, mate. Or a midsummer murders with Paris. Andrew was in as well. They're all right as well. Exactly, exactly. Well, um, <laughs> did you ever hear the story of uh, Michael Caine with uh, Jaws 4? And uh, oh, he always huh? gets loads of stick for being... Michael Caine gets loads of stick for being in Jaws 4. Um, I think it's Jaws 4, yeah, because obviously it's like a crap sequel. And yeah. um, and apparently somebody said to him, Michael, why, why the hell did you take that part? And he goes, they gave me the script. I flipped it open to page one and it said, external Bahamas. And I was like, yep, <laughs> I'm, I'm gone. Yeah. Why yeah, not? Yeah, Why I'll not? Yeah. Well, that's what Sam was saying. You know, Sam Hall was saying he, he was in, you know, Death in Paradise for about five minutes to lay dead on the floor all day, but he got 10 days in Guadalupe out of it. So, yeah. not a, you know, yeah, not a bad one. Not a bad one. Um, so, what, what's the... I mean, I'm looking through 32 credits as an actor, seven writing credits, five credits as a producer, one as a director. So, you've done... You've done the full the full spectrum already within your industry, haven't you? Is yeah. acting the one though? <clears throat> acting's the one. Acting's always the one. Um, okay. I've just I've just actually uh, directed a short film uh, that's 
it's in post production now. It's called Screw Job. It's about a, a professional wrestler, um, kind of like a Rocky kind of story. Um, so I, I tried my hand at directing there, and I do like it. Um, but it did make me realize that it's acting is number one. Acting is yeah. always the thing. But sometimes it's like you know you got to try try different things and also occupy yourself as well. And I like to you know you you don't just want to be a passenger in your field. Mm-hmm. You don't just want to be receiving stuff and doing what stories other people say are good. Cause sometimes you'd be like, I'm going to minute. Why aren't we telling this story? Why aren't we telling this story? Um, so that's, that's where that comes from. Sometimes you got to, and actually I uh, sent a message to Rob, the director of Howard's way. Um, Cause I wrote a little, I wrote a little short film about Dixie Dean. Um, as one example of like, and I know you and Sam were talking about it as well, but there's like, you know, I want to get in all my Everton propaganda and shape, you know, shape uh, the industry and put that out there as well. Um, You know, looking at, and I don't know about you, but when I saw Creed and like Tony Bellew in that, I was just like, oh, like this is always, it was so like, it was such a big thing to like be in the cinema watching one of my favorite franchises, but you know, in Goodison Park with the blue colors and, you know, a Sylvester Stallone movie, all of that kind of like, I want to see more of that. So anything that's I can do, to, you know, to shape that. So that's where the writing, and also it's a good way to earn extra money as well. Uh, you know, when you get a good writing job, it's, it's good money. I just pitched for a writing job for a, uh, a superhero film. Um, like a not not like a Marvel or a DC, but it's a, a different type. But um, mm. you know, if you get one of those big jobs, it can be big money, so it can keep you keep you going between the acting stuff. Fantastic! It it it, it is great seeing. Obviously, <clears throat> yourself, Sam, Ho, and Andrew Gower have all mentioned Dixie doing a Dixie. So the three <laughs> yeah, are going to have yeah. to get together and create this <laughs> this film for Netflix or something because. It's mm. uh, it's definitely a story that's that's worth telling. It's incredible. No one will ever do the kind of stuff he did, but his life as well. His life was mad. You know, oh. he had a motorcycle accident and never nearly played yeah. football again and come back to be the greatest centre forward ever. So <laughs> it, I think if it was tied in a little bit like the English game in that kind of thing, yeah. but with with the football, I think it'd be I think it'd be really interesting and an incredible story. And surely there's a it's got to be one about Howard Kendall. Maybe you can get Rob. Maybe oh. you and Rob can work on something with, for the Howard yeah. Kendall. Yeah. yeah, there's no reason why Howard's Way couldn't be uh, like a film like, what was that, The Damned United? That kind mm. of thing where yeah, <clears throat> there's yeah. no reason why. Not that it's, it's obviously a completely different story, but there's no reason why that can't be it. And and you know what else? Like, Because I, I, get, I get pretty angry sometimes being down in London in terms of, I remember I wrote an article, like an article for a website a while ago, I can't remember what it was, but, um, you know, about how you wouldn't believe how, especially in London, how people don't know how illustrious Everton's history is. It's like people, people literally think that we're like, we're like a West Ham or a Newcastle in terms of what we've won. Like, and I was mentioning it to a guy the other day, a mate of mine who knows football like really well. He's got a great knowledge. And I told him about Howard's way. And I told, and then he would tell him about the eighties and what happened with Heisel and all this. And he was like, he was, he was like, what? He was like, I didn't, what, did you win it? And then he, and then he, as he was speaking to me, he was Googling it and he was like, bloody hell, you got nine league titles and five FA Cups and all this. So I think anything we can do, but that's a great idea. The Howard's way thing. Um, for sure. Um, maybe you should have a chat to Sam about it. Um, but also the Dixie thing, definitely. And I've done some research on, on some like old Dixie interviews. And one thing I love about when you read about what he used to say, it's not a lot of stuff, but I think he actually hit on Everton's spirit way back then. Cause there's a, Mm. there's an interview where he said something along the lines of, he said something like, you know, people are talking about the beautiful game and Barcelona and, you know, passing it around beautifully and all this. And he said something like, he said, that's not the beautiful game. The beautiful game is getting the ball in the net as directly as possible. Fast paced, get it in the net. And I was like, well, that's that's Everton, isn't it? It's that's just, what we love. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what it's like. It's that blend of like, no, 
get it in the get it in the net in a fast, efficient way. That's beautiful football. Um, so I think even even he had maybe there's something I don't know something that seeped in from from then. I don't yeah. know. Well, that's it's that's the psyche. <clears throat> that's our DNA, as they like to call it. Well. He's he's felt that in the thirties, late twenties, thirties. Yeah. So yeah. it's been around, well, it's been around for exactly. So it's like hundred yeah. years of that. So maybe maybe there is something. Rob's a good mate of mine, Rob Sloman. So I'll definitely yeah. uh, tell him to have a little chat with you and see what we can come up with. Um, I'm yeah, also that's... speaking to speaking to Chris Mason, who's another Evertonian actor who's living in LA at the moment. But he's another one. He had a film out a while ago. He had his Everton kit on in that. Just a little getting up out of bed with the, the shirt on. So it's great that all you all you uh, thespians are getting Everton into uh, Everton into every every film and every show that you do. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, just just onto just onto the Everton thing, Sam. What was what's like your earliest memory of Everton? You know, how how did you become an Evertonian? And <clears throat> um, the earliest one of my early memories was I remember getting the. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to refer to it as, but the I remember getting the the big NEC kit, as I call it, as was my first kit, the one where the NEC was the big letters for the first time, yeah. with the with the outrageously detailed Goodison Park in the uh, like oh, sewn yeah, into yeah. the into the kit. Um, I remember me and my cousin Mark, we both had matching shirts of those with our with our names on the back. I remember getting that for my birthday, um, so that was my first kit. And then apart, like, whenever anyone says, oh, so how did you end up? I can't remember making a decision. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just like, uh, yeah, like, because my, my granddad on my mum's side is a, a big Evertonian, and he actually had, he got, I don't know how it worked then, but he actually was offered um, to, like, join the equivalent of the academy back in his right. day. His name was yeah. John Armstrong. Um but he had to get three buses to get to the training because he lived on the Wirral. <clears throat> and his dad at the time said, there's no money in football, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not giving you a bloody lift. If you want to go to that training, you can make your own way. So it, it was just, he just, every time he went, he was late and he couldn't, he couldn't make it work with whatever else he was doing. Yeah. Um, and then so I'm on, I'm on, on, um, on my mum's side, yeah, my grandmother was an Evertonian. And then on my dad's side, his dad was an Evertonian. He was an Evertonian. Um, and my dad also, my dad died two years ago, but they did a great thing, uh, a little mention in the program for him uh, when he died because he yeah. had he had trials for Everton as well. Um, so, so it's in your so, family. Yeah. Go on, what? It's in your family then, isn't it? The same it's, as, it's, you know. it's, just, it's just there. And I actually remember, I remember when I was a little kid and, and I actually remember only really knowing like that there was Everton and Liverpool. Like that was, <laughs> there was a blue team and a red team. And that was, right. that was it. And then, um, yeah, and then my cousin, my cousin's family, um, who I used to have a season ticket with, uh, my cousin and my uncle, and they're both from Fazakali. Um, so we used to, they still go, um, but I used to have a season ticket with them. Um so yeah, it's just been you know as I'm sure most of well the majority of Evertonians is there's no decision, you just are, and then there you go. Born, born <clears> of <throat> blue. Oh my first, Who were you? Okay. my first game. My, my first game was my granddad took me and my cousin to must have been maybe ninety two or ninety ninety one or ninety two, and it was against Arsenal, and uh, we drew one all. And I remember being devastated. I was like, "Whoa, what? Oh, that's crap! One all." <laughs> and, then, and then my memory was walking with. I remember walking with my granddad, and uh, loads of people asked him, "Oh, what was the score?" And he was like, "Oh, one one." And everyone was like, "Oh, all right." And I was like, "What?" Not happy. We're happy with the results. Not happy. <laughs> no, no. Who were your uh, no? Who were your heroes then? Everton heroes growing up. Your favourite players. Um, I mean, there's like the, <clears throat> I suppose the, when I was really young, obviously Duncan Ferguson was a big one. Um, I loved, I loved David Unsworth. I loved him. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. It, it, and also I think because when I was playing for my team, uh, uh, one of the other lads always said I was like David Unsworth because of my tackling. 
and I just used to like <laughs> like go in like really hard and I just loved that that rhino like uh like thing that he had where he just and he just had so much passion about him um mm. and he scored some and obviously the pens just I just loved oh, that he yeah. was just really oh just brilliant at pens um, he was a, yeah and then who else uh I loved um I love Gravison <clears throat> love Tommy Gravison I love mm. his distinctive run something about the way you know every time he got the ball he was like he, he ran like no other player yeah he was um, strange run but good yeah and then who who else um i loved this and then there's other players where like i think the player that i love like in hindsight so much more now is k hill yeah yeah i think he <clears throat> like i didn't appreciate like i loved him when he was with us but i didn't appreciate just how how awesome he was um he almost made it look easy his ability to just be in the right place at the right time mm. and um and i think we he summed up the everton spirit and i think we we always need to have players like that and that's as long as we've got players like that going forward with with with, with some flash players as well then you know that's what that's what what's exciting what if you made of um Carlo Ancelotti was surprised Everton were able to get him and are you excited for the future with him? It's easy for me to say this, but I, I when we got going back, which I'll bring it to Ancelotti, when, when we got Martinez in, I was like, why are we getting in a manager who's been relegated? And... And I, I, I obviously did say it in hindsight, but I was like, "Why are we getting what? And why are we getting why are we going for him?" And then, and then obviously first season, I was like, "All right, <laughs> he's doing all right." Um, but then obviously it went downhill. And then ever since Martinez, and my 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 theory has always been, and I've always said it to you know to my mates or my cousin, or whatever, whatever talking about it is, why don't we get a winner? Mm. Yeah. Why don't we like I've, I've had it for the up and coming. Um, young, promising, you know, whatever, whatever. So when we got Ancelotti, yeah. and I was over the moon, and I was like, we should have got, we we we've needed to get someone like this for years because mm. I think as well, it's it's a statement. Um, it'll attract players, obviously, but just just getting someone who's a winner, and I think when where Everton are, and obviously I'm of a generation that has only really got a '95 FA Cup to enjoy. Um, you've got a whole generation or maybe two generations that don't know an Everton that regularly wins stuff. Mm. So yeah. I think I think that's why it's imperative that we've got a man at the helm to whom winning is not a big deal. Mm. Like, oh yeah, Champions League. Yeah, I remember when we won them. Yeah. So, you know, that, and he even said something like that after a match. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, we, we lost. I remember losing the lead once in the Champions League or whatever he said. <laughs> yeah, but then yeah. we won it the next year. Whatever it was. So I think um, I, I was made up from the get go, and I was loving it because I remember before there was that weird switch where um, there was rumours of Arsenal getting Ancelotti and us getting Arteta. And even mm. though I love Arteta, I was like, nah, we need to be getting Ancelotti. And I really thought Arsenal mm. were going to get Ancelotti. So when that flip I was like I think we've we've done the better business there so I think I don't think it's going to happen overnight but I think I think there's it makes me a lot calmer about the future like and I think there is a more of a calm around the fan community I think just because we, we've got to trust him because he, he does know what he's doing he's got the track record to prove it so I think we kind of got to go all right <clears throat> let's see let's see what he does and I think I think it is going to be a challenge for him, um, but he seems to genuinely want to bring us back to where we should be. Yeah, everything you've said, I was the same with Martinez, couldn't understand why we were getting someone who'd been relegated and didn't know how to defend. And at the end of the first year, I was thinking, oh, maybe I've just got this right, but yeah. But you're right, yeah. we've, got a, we've got someone in who's used to winning, and that's a massive thing. Um, and hopefully... When this, you know, when we we can return to playing football and and moving forward, hopefully he'll get us uh, back to where we feel we belong. And that brings me on nicely to my final final question for you. Really, you mentioned it before, but 
Howard's Way film because it, it's that should be the standard, in my opinion, of where we hold Everton up to. So how enjoyable was that for you to watch? Because obviously you were uh, you weren't born at the time. So did you enjoy watching that film and and seeing Everton's history played out on uh, on the screen? Uh, the funny thing is, my cousin, who I mentioned before, who's got the season ticket, um, Mark, he he got me Howard's Way for Christmas on DVD. And I brought it back down to London with me, and I put it on my shelf. <clears throat> and it took about three months for me to bring up the courage to watch it. Because the, just I was staring at it, and I was like, I, I don't know if I can take watching us win stuff. Because it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna annoy me, um, and, and 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 lo and behold, I, I started playing it, um, and within within seconds, I was feeling shivers and emotions because I was like, oh, I've obviously heard stories about it, watched matches from the era, and you know, heard interviews and with the players at the time, and stories from my granddad about you know when we went, it wasn't if we're gonna win, it's by how much we're gonna win. Um, mm. So I yeah I started getting quite emotional from the get go and then once I got into it um, yeah it was it was obviously glorious as well to like experience it and like whoa just go through chronologically how it went down yeah. um, and all the little nip like uh, details about you know how when we sold Alan Ball and how you know loads of people including uh, you know David saying oh you've made a mistake we're not going to win the league or whatever for years that was my la- um, that was my lad that that was my little boy oh yeah was it yeah yeah, yeah. The one who's running to the phone box yeah if acting debut um, so there you go <laughs> whoa well there you go um yeah so <clears throat> it was um it was it was an amazing story and just um all the players and the personalities of the players and the team spirit and all of that. And um, I think, I think that, and that era, again, it defines, it defines Evertonian's character. It seeps through the generations because not only have you got the memory of the winning and being on top, but then it is that, you know, people talk about the bitterness as well. And, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's a thing, but um, I remember I heard someone, um, uh, it was actually just a random reference, but I'm a big wrestling fan. And uh, CM Punk, who was the wrestler who left WWE and very, like, <laughs> they hated each other, you know, parting ways. And everyone was saying to CM Punk, oh, you're bitter. You're so bitter about leaving and not being on top and all this. And then he did this tell-all interview. And the first thing he said was, he said, first of all, I just want to say, it's okay to be bitter. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> It's okay to be bitter when there's been injustice, which mm. I kind of like. Um, so, you know, I think there is a reason for why we have that, like, feeling that we are better than where we are now. And also mm. and also that inner anger, that inner fury almost, which I think, you know, it spills into, you know, the way that we have that passion and aggression and how we respond to those kind of you know, when Dunk took over and it was like, yeah, we've got that fire in our belly because we're, we are angry. Mm. We are angry still. Um, so basically, to bring it back to Howard's way, it's also a tragedy in the sense that, like, every time you relive that story, you're like, oh, how did that happen? And n- hardly anyone seems to speak about it or know about it. And, you know, it's never spoken about, it's never referred to, even when, you know, that whole city potential ban I don't know whether it's going to happen or it wasn't going to happen. I mean, Lineker did a, a crying emoji, like referring to, um, you know, when he played for Everton. But aside from that, mm. I didn't see any mainstream media going, oh, well, isn't this interesting? Because in the 80s, they did this. Remember when not there was nothing? So no. Howard's Way is an important film, and I think it's a great... Like, I want to see it on, you know, I'll flick on Netflix, and on the recommends, it says Sunderland Till I Die at the moment. And I'm like, well, Howard's Way should be in front of that. Um, mm. so yeah, it, it was an emotional thing, but it also gave me a, I really enjoyed it as well. And it was really uplifting to see those players and just hear those players talk about it now. Um, it gets it into the, gets it into the bloodstream and gets me fired up for whenever the, the football resumes. And I am positive about the future. I think, I think we can do it. And I think we, we kind of have to do it cause it's been far too long. It's like, we've got to get on with it now. It's, 
you know, just got to get it done. And, we, and it, we've just got to win something. That's we've got to break the deadlock and get this. It doesn't matter what it is. <clears throat> finish, finish 16th and win the League Cup. And then <laughs> we're off to the races. You know what I mean? I really do think that. I think it's breaking the deadlock. That's all it's going to take. Yeah, you're right. It's it's been far too long on that that film. The team that slipped through the cracks almost. It's good that it's back out there, and um, I know that Sky documentary have picked it up now. So hopefully Netflix will in Lovely. the future, and yeah, so more people hopefully fingers crossed, more people will see it, and not Evertonians. I'm talking about other people because I've watched yeah. Clough and 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 Forest documentaries and things, and go. Actually, yeah, Everton are a massive club, fourth most successful English club, which gets shoved under the carpet. So it's important yeah. we keep banging the drum. Um, and important you keep banging the drum as an actor in that industry. Keep telling, keep telling the no. story. Well, no, I'll do, I'll do, um, obviously, like, uh, try and squeeze it in whenever I can. It was funny, actually, because I am, I am, I remember there was, when I was doing Little Crackers with John Bishop, and I was playing his brother. Eddie Bishop <clears throat> and this other lad uh, uh, was playing him but in the 70s when they were younger and obviously they were <laughs> he's a red isn't he and we had this one scene where we were going door to door um, doing um, Penny for the Guy I think it was and um, and, and John was threatening through the because uh, myself and uh, Josh who was playing the young lad we were both Evertonians and so John was like threatening us through the whole shoot. Oh, when we're doing that scene, I'm getting you a Liverpool shirt. And I, we were like, you're not. No way. It's not in the script. And then, uh, but we did. So basically the, the compromise was we, we, he gave us like red and white scarves. But it was like, there was no Liverpool branding on it. So we were like, whew. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, loads of my uh, friends have threatened me. They're like, uh, yeah, but you you know you're gonna you know you're gonna get offered a part with having to wear a Liverpool shirt. And I was like, oh no. Um, Imagine it. So hopefully, uh, yeah, we, we can uh, all. Uh, and that's what it is, isn't it? It's about the community. Um, you know, doing what we can to, and I think all the other things that all the extra things like being in the in the presence in the media and in films and in TV, like. That film Creed, I think, probably did more for the Everton brand than most things that the club have done in the past 20 yeah. years, just just because people... It's a Sylvester Stallone movie. People will see it. Um, yeah. And I've always thought about him as well. Like, maybe he'd be interested in, you know, helping get some of these, you know, a Howard's Way drama or a Dixie Dean film getting made. Going to put it on you then, Sam, to sort that. That's, your, that's one of your <laughs> tasks. One of your tasks. When we're on lockdown, put the feelers out while you're on lockdown. Yeah, Listen, hey, thanks hey. for taking, <laughs> thanks for taking time out your day to uh, to talk. So it's been lovely to chat to you, and uh, hopefully we'll see it in, uh, on our screens more and more. And with some Everton branding on, would be lovely. Of course, yeah. Well, no, thanks for having me on, and um, I'm a I'm a regular watcher, subscriber, and supporter of <laughs> Toffee TV. I think it's. Uh, it, you guys have probably done just as much um, as Creed, you know, in terms of the fan base, and it's it's good. It's a good. It's always my place to go to not only when I'm feeling angry <laughs> after a game, <laughs> but also I think it, it's also the place to go as well for like thinking right how, you know, how can we move forward and the people you're getting on, the thing you're building. You guys are building the the, the future community that we're gonna, you know win stuff with with this club well listen thanks very much for you saying so um but like i say pleasure to have your on and we'll definitely definitely have you on again be lovely if you get an acting job up here come in and see us in the studio as well that'd be nice it'd be nice to uh to have a sit down in the studio with you look after yourself good luck with everything else you've got going on <laughs> and uh stay safe most importantly cheers baz you too say hi to ped for me Will do. Cheers, Sam. Take care, mate. So, big thanks there to Sam Benjamin for joining us a chat about his career and, of course, Everton, as he's a big blue. Make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and if you want more videos, join us on Patreon. See you later.